Hello everyone and welcome to the Voice of the Prophet Ministries. My name is Prophetess Janelle and if you are viewing today on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook for the first time, I want to thank you for coming and if you're a returning subscriber, I want to thank you for coming and joining and staying with us as well. And so on today, I have a word of the Lord for his church, his bride, his chosen ones, those that have been called out by God, right? The Ecclesia. And so the Lord began to speak to me and he began to, as I began to look and ponder on the word the Lord gave me a few years ago, he began to show me that there were going to be some scandals that would arise in the church. And we see these things coming into play. If you've been a part of the church for any number of years, I'm pretty sure that you can identify, um, different situations, different leaders, music, musicians, and so forth, whose names have been caught up in different things in the media and so forth. I do not have to call them out by name. That is not what I'm here to do. That is not the point that I'm trying to make. But this is what the Lord began to show me. He said that the scandals are going to come, but he also gave me instruction, right? And so pertaining to the things that happen in the body of Christ, because a lot of times there are some misconceptions that, you know, Christians are perfect and we, we, we're not allowed to fall and we're not allowed to do anything wrong right but there is a even though we're born again and we receive jesus christ as our lord and savior we are still born in this sinful human nature and there's a process that is called sanctification that happens with the believer as they come and journey with god where god begins to purge them of their old nature and and make them more like christ and that process happens throughout our whole life there are going to be things that are going to um god's going to purge us from take away prune from us all the way to the day that we die i'm telling you that is sanctification but with that being said the bible also states that there was going to come a time where there was going to be a great falling away and we were going to see people backslide fall away renounce christ um just totally turn away and so we know these things are coming and so it, even with that we want to be encouraged because why jesus saves power belongs to god salvation belongs to god it doesn't matter if one who has fallen into sin that belongs to him or one who has backslidden and, and decided to go back into the world know that god is able to redeem deliver and set free whomever he, he power belongs to him he is able to do it and so we are encouraged that God knows how to bring back his children those who have went back those prodigal sons who have went back into the world he knows how to save them right but this is the word of the Lord that he gave me pertaining to those who um, may fall into a scandal or things that we may see happen in the media and come out and so forth in the future and even for now, he says, leave them. He gave me this word. He says, simply leave them. So let's go to the word, right? Because the word always is a guidance unto us. So let's go to Matthew 13. I'm coming from verse 24 to 30. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. And it says this. Another parable he put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed into the field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, no, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, pay attention. I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them into bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn and so if you go on to read to verse 37 jesus begins to break down and explain this parable that he is the good sower he's the one that sows the seeds into um into the ground and the ground represents the world and the good seeds represents his saints those who have been called out by him and so the, the enemy that came, of course, is the devil and the bad seeds that he sows was people who do not belong to Christ. They are literally workers of Satan, right? To do his work in the church, to cause division, to cause slander, to cause um, um, misrepresentation in the church. There are people who are in the church that literally do not belong to God, right? They have been planted there by the enemy. But even with us understanding that and even with them seeing that there were wheat and tares, God still told them to leave them. So I want to break down this example because 
the Lord uses my children a lot to deal with me and to show me things. And so I have five children, but four of them um, are of an age where they can really do more for themselves. So um, a, a few years back, you know, I would wash their clothes all together and then put it in a basket and have them go in there and separate their clothes and then let each, each one of them fold their clothes. But after doing this a few times, I realized that it was making more of a mess letting them separate it was taking so much time for them to separate their clothes on their own and i one day i just wised up and came to my senses and was like okay listen girl this ain't working you know it's not working like for whatever reason they don't have the patience or capacity to separate their clothes and so what i did i began to get divider baskets to have them put their own clothes into different baskets and then when i washed them they were already separated so i was doing the separation for them and so it took down the time of me having to have them fold their clothes up everything be became very much smooth and so watch this likewise we as adults and children of God right we have a hard time discerning the heart of men we have a very difficult time separating that which is of God and that which is not of God and I'm gonna break it down because I know some people like I know the Lord and the Lord speaks to me yes I'm a prophet of God and God speaks to me too but I haven't always known everything I haven't always got everything right and so watch this the Bible says this God look at um, God look at the heart man look out the outward but God looks out the heart. That is true. That is how God said, listen, I'm different from you. My vision is different from you. The way I perceive things are different from you. Matter of fact, he took it a step further. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. So there is a distinction between us, how we operate and how God operates. So he understands that. And so unless the spirit of God comes in and um, um, shows us that information, gives us that information, we cannot do it in our own strength or human ability. Right. Watch this. Samuel, who was a seasoned prophet, OK, who heard God's voice audibly, who could tell you where your donkey was at. Listen, who could call you out by name. He almost missed with anointing David because he was looking at the outer appearance. Let's go on. The children of Israel who had journeyed with God for so many years had so many experiences with God they too missed so many times they missed God's ways when God chose to use Nebuchadnezzar to punish them they couldn't see they didn't understand they couldn't accept it when God said he's going to raise up a sinner man a, a, a secular man a king named King Cyrus to deliver them and to restore the goods back to them they couldn't discern it he literally had to let them know listen this is what I'm about to do and I need you guys to come on board with it because I the Lord have spoken I the Lord have ordained him and so again the Pharisees the Sadducees the scribes these people were brought up from a young age to know the word to know the Torah by heart listen they knew the word they knew how to find it they, they didn't have no iPad and all these electronics where we can just click 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 no they knew exactly where how to articulate and maneuver through the word yet when Jesus came on the scene they missed him they totally missed him they could not discern that that which they read was that which was standing before their eyes so we have to understand understand something unless God allows us to see the heart of a man watch this which is only done by his spirit God reveals to us things by his spirit giving us the spirit of discernment giving us the spirit of insight listen um giving us uh telling us audibly giving us all these the spirit of revelation right unless he gives it to us we cannot know within ourselves and on our own, right? And so that's just the truth. These are gifts of God. And so without by his spirit, we can and we will miss. And so I have witnessed a lot of division within the body of Christ. And I have seen people, especially over the last, uh, I'll say six months, they have literally pushed and built platforms off the place of division and criticism, right? But I want to remind the people of God, and if you're watching on here and you so happen to stumble across this video, I want to remind you that the Lord is speaking to you because he wants you to know who he is and his character. God has never anointed anybody with the anointing of the critic God has never called anyone into the office of the skeptic God did not give and 
lay his hands and endow anyone with the spirit of judgmentalism. God did not raise anyone up to be a news broadcaster. Come on here, somebody, and to stand and to broadcast everything that happens negative in the church. And this is what is happening. Literally, anything happened in the church, anything is broadcast, anything is said, we see them jump on it immediately. And they are just echo echoing division and echoing negativity and echoing all of these things things that God has not have not called them to do. I don't care who it is. God did not call them to that platform. The spirit of God is unity. The spirit of God is oneness and the spirit of God is love. But I do know somebody who carries that anointing, if you will call it, who sits in that office, if you want to say it, say it to be so that way. And his name is Satan. His name is the devil. He is the accuser of the brethren. Listen, that is his title. That is his main goal. That is his objective to kill, steal, and destroy, to get the children of God off path, to sabotage their name, to sabotage what God has set up. Listen, even when he when he stood with Yeshua was there, he began to try to accuse, accuse Yeshua right in the presence of the Lord, and the Lord rebuked him. The Lord had to rebuke him and say, no, this is one that has been snatched like a branch out of the fire. No, this is my child. And so why would we want to partner with Satan and to push the bandwagon of division and sabotage over Christ's bride? Listen, Satan does his job very well. He don't need no help accusing the brethren. He don't take no days off. Listen, he don't take no vacations. He's not sleeping on the job. He does his job very well. And we we do not need to assist nor help nor push his agenda. We are not called to do that. So watch this. We should not help him tear down what God has called, established, and built up. God is not God has not called us into disunity, but into unity. Love does not slander. Love covers a multitude of sin. And so watch this really quickly um so the lord began to speak to me about the place because a lot of people i hear them saying like you know the lord called me to put this out put this out on front street the lord called me to um to rebuke this person i'm a firm believer and i've been in ministry for a very long time now um and i've been i sit up under my leadership i am submitted to leadership i'm a firm believer that you cannot god will not call you to rebuke someone who you are not close to relationally or close in close contact and what do i mean by that just because you see people in high places fall does not mean that there are not people around them that try to warn them that try to give them words of the lord why would then the lord send you someone on a on a platform to begin to speak over the airways when they may not even hear the word that is being put out how can we back this up with the Bible? How can we back this up with Bible? Anytime, even with Paul, when Paul began to rebuke Peter, he didn't he didn't do it on the three way. He went to Peter and he rebuked him in his face. And not only that, Peter and Peter and Apostle Paul were on the same level. They were both apostles. Again, anytime you see a prophet in the Bible, God would send them. He would send them to that king, to that leader, to that city, to that region. He would send them there and they would deliver that message to their family face and if it wasn't to their face they would have he would have them hand write a message and deliver it to that individual so that way they would be left without excuse so i know full heartedly that god is not operating from this way because he is not a god of division he is not a god of disorder he is not a god of chaos he is a god of order so what do we say then about those who have fall, fallen into um, indiscretion, who has, who has lifestyles have been put on display to say that they are not following, watch this, what God has said we ought to thrive to be, right? So what am I not saying? Am I, am I, I'm not saying to follow blindly behind false teachers and people who are willingly misrepresenting God's bride. I'm not telling you to do that. Am I saying to ignore the warning signs of bad fruit? Absolutely not. Am I saying to disregard when your spirit is showing you something or you're discerning that something is off about an individual? No, absolutely not. Well, what I am saying is that we should do what the Bible tells us to do, which God instructs us to pray for all men, right? I am saying that we should be merciful 
because the Bible says if we are merciful, then we will receive mercy. That's the word of the Lord. I am saying that we should be full of grace so that when the time comes, those who are mature in the body of Christ, we can restore them. The ones that have fallen right with the spirit of gentleness, like the Bible instructs us in, Gal in Galatians 6 and 1. And so this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to leave them, leave them. And so I want to admonish you. If you are one that have been kind of caught up in all the following and the clicking with, you know, the, the names put up and the faces put up on these thumbnails and so forth, you know, slandering. I, I want to admonish you to do this. If you're a true believer of God, you're a child of God and you've clicked and you're watching this video is for a reason. I want to admonish you. To no longer be a partaker of this behavior, right? Do not allow your ears to be open to this type of slander and division. Do not allow that seed of bitterness and suspicion to dwell on the inside of you, right? I would admonish you to unsubscribe. When you see it, the Bible says, um, the Bible tells us to mark those that cause division. This is the vision. This is the vision. Mark them. Mark them and unsubscribe. When I mean uns what do I mean by unsubscribe? Unsubscribe in spirit and in deed. Unsubscribe to that attitude. Unsubscribe to that behavior. Unsubscribe to that mindset. And also literally unsubscribe. Hit the not do not follow no more button. Whatever you have to do. Hide, hide the videos because you don't want that to get into your spirit. And you don't want that to get into your soul because it's poison. It's not of the Lord. It is not of the Lord. We don't want to continue that and we don't want to hype that up as that's something that God is, is backing and condoning because he is not. And here's the thing. It's so funny how the enemy works because he will have us over here so distracted with the tears and with the things that are happening and with the wheat that may be bending at the moment. Right. Because not all of the people who we who we deem to be of the devil are of the devil. They may just be having a weak moment. And so we're, while we're over here all distracted. And getting caught up on what's happening here and what's happening there. We are literally missing out on what God is doing. I have seen, I have not seen so many celebrities leave their occupation, denounce say, the work of Satan, and come into Christ and proclaim Christ like I have seen in the past year. Listen, God is moving. He is moving in the hearts of men. They may not look like you. They may not sound like you. They may not even be whom you have would ever have thought to come in. But I'm telling you, God is moving. And if we're not sensitive to his spirit and we're not sensitive to what he is saying in his hour, we will miss the hand of God. So people of God, again, 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 I would say to you, do what God has told us to do. And that is leave them, leave them. Pray for them. God know how to bring them back. God know how to expose who needs to be exposed. God is the one who knows how to separate it. Because if we trying to sit up here and pinpoint and say that person is this and this person is that, we may be putting our hands on God's anointed. We may be putting our hands on someone who is just in the middle of a process. We may be putting our mouth on someone that God has handpicked but is not fully purged yet. So we want to be able to give mercy and extend mercy because one day you never know if you're going to be on the, un, on the other side of that receiving stick, right? You may be the one that needs to receive it in that time of need. And you're not out there publicly on a high platform, you know, like they are. And so you're, you're back here. Nobody's watching you, but they're, all their business is out on Front Street. So we want to pray for them even the more because the ones that are out there on Front Street, they don't represent the whole of Christ, but they are surely the ones that everyone is seeing. So they're almost like a billboard because they're the ones that have that great level of influence, right? And so with that being said, I just want to just, I want to pray for you guys and just say, listen, just ask the Lord for strength, ask him for wisdom, ask him how to go about it because you want to please God in all that you do. So people of God, if you see it happening, remember the word of the Lord and leave them. Okay. God bless you and have a great day. Does God still speak? Janelle Edmondson answered these questions and more in her newly released book, The Voice of God Still Speaks, available on Amazon, Kindle, Audible and iTunes. Purchase yours today.